I would try my hardest and I'd try and I just don't understand why I just wasn't getting it. Then she sat down looking at her stage sized castle. People would be like, you're not trying hard enough, you're lazy, work harder. They would just be like, oh, you're stupid, you're dyslexic, you don't know how to read. Shay's learning disability didn't just affect her ability to read, it affected her self-esteem. Her self-esteem, as far as school work goes, is very low. She, she always, is, always says, I can't, I can't, I'm, I can't do this, I can't do it. I hated going to school. <laughs> My mom would like literally have to drag me out of the house to get me to school because I just didn't want to go through the long day. She was a nervous wreck. She was just, I thought she was just gonna fall apart. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Being dyslexic can be extremely frustrating, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, millions of teens have learning disabilities. I felt really discouraged, and there's times when I would just want to give up because I felt like it was hopeless. Shay's disability ate away at her self-esteem. She realized things needed to change, but how? You know you can do it, it's just hard like getting it out there, you know, and like having the confidence. What advice would you give Shay to help her improve her self-esteem? The teenage years are a time of exploration, trying out different activities, sports, hobbies. It's a time to figure out what you like and who you are, to discover your own identity. People's self-concept develops over time. Your self-esteem can take a lot of hits during adolescence. One way to boost your self-esteem is to identify the best things about you emphasizing what that teenager's strengths are, what they do bring to the table, what, you know, capabilities that they are showing. Because that's really, ultimately, what helps them compensate. Sometimes you need to accept things about yourself that you cannot change. They'll call me shrimp or shorty or... There's a lot of names and just quick comments that people make just to, um, just to try and make you feel bad. They call me like a like a short Pillsbury. These insults can have a lasting effect. They go to your head, you know, and they just stay there for a while. And let's face it, I mean, I think society puts a premium on size, certainly height. I believe they see that and feel like they don't measure up. The inner voice may be that I'm not as good as. So what do you do if you're short? First, understand that your height isn't something you can control. So be realistic and accept those things about yourself that you cannot change. There is no normal. There is such a variety from, if we just look at eyes, if we just look at skin color, if we just look at height, there really is no normal teenager. We need to be able to say, I'm beautiful anyway. I'm okay just the way I am. I'm not going to listen to that person who's calling me short or calling me too tall or not thin or too thin or whatever it is, I'm um, just not going to listen to that. You start to realize how insignificant it really is and how important it is just to know who you are as a person and be confident about who you are and, and that you can carry yourself any way you want and, and that's who you are and not your height. Be yourself, um, you know, if like they're making fun of you, you know, don't try hard to fit in or anything like that, you know, just be yourself. and. Well, well, your real friends will come. Self-esteem is um, accepting yourself for who you are. I'm kind of odd. I'll like, you know, say weird things, you know, act completely odd, you know, out of normal, but that's normal for me. You have to keep sending this message of look at what you have going for you. Look at how you handle the situation. Um, you know, you be the person that you believe you are and can be. Glenn's issue wasn't his height. I was always the, the nerd kind of in this class. Why was there a little support for those millions? When it was time to hang out, you know, no one really ever called me. So I kind of, you know, kept to myself. I was real quiet and didn't really need to interact too much with people. And you know, when you get in high school, you really want to do more of that kind of thing, but I didn't know how. Glenn was painfully shy. He didn't know how to start a conversation. I hated it. 
because you know I might I might be around some people, and I want to start up a conversation. You know, hey, how you doing? What's up? What's your name? But it just wouldn't come out. I couldn't say it. Glenn examined his strengths and set goals to join clubs. Okay, and who's, who's gonna be on your team tomorrow? The choir. The golf and swim teams. With each success, his self-esteem improved and he gradually came out of his shell. Actually, I remember my first time in practice. And at the end of practice, the coach you know, called me up and said, okay, let's see what you got. And everybody on the team was there watching me and I just jump in the pool and go as hard as I can. You know, like, yeah, that's pretty good. So that kind of built my confidence. Glenn was able to overcome his shyness, enjoy himself, and boost his self-esteem in the process. And I find that, you know, nothing is as bad as it seems. I don't have to be shy. I can, I can start a conversation if I want to. I can conquer the world, you know. Something else Glenn learned? You don't need to be like everyone else to feel good about yourself. Sarah knows that, too. They uh, come up to me and they're like, you're looking kind of crazy today, Sarah. What's going on with the whole style thing? And Sarah wasn't going to change just to go along with the crowd. She found friends who admire her. I don't even think she thinks about the way she dresses. She just likes to have fun. She's always herself. I've never seen her in a situation where she acts a certain way or likes a specific thing just so she can fit in. When I spike my hair, I, it makes me feel good about myself. I like it. It's something different. It lets them know what kind of person I am. Sarah says that her differences give her confidence and make her feel good about herself. But she wasn't always so secure. When I was younger, I was more of an outcast. I thought that I was extremely overweight. I thought I was ugly. I thought that, you know, I couldn't get any friends, that I couldn't get a boyfriend, that I was, I was very self-conscious because I was made fun of earlier on and really rejected by this a couple group of girls that I wanted to be friends with so badly. Think about how different you are now from a few years ago. In Sarah's case... As soon as I started branching out and started realizing, hey, look, I do have an opinion of my own, I started um, getting more into what I wanted to do, what I thought was cool in my own sense of fashion. As I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize that what other th people think about me just doesn't matter as much anymore. I think we're gaining more acceptance of a lot of different diversities that are out there. Part of developing your own identity and improving your self-esteem in the process is figuring out the things you excel at. Sarah found her own niche. I sing, I write poetry, I play the piano as well. Pretty much everything in the arts interests me. All aspects of it really fascinate me because through all the arts, I can express myself in every single one of them. And you think, gosh, how could that person be so happy if they're not in the in crowd or if they're not dressed a certain way or if they're not, um, you know, getting straight A's in school or if they're not, you know, going to these parties, whatever it is. How could that person be happy? Now you know, it's individuality. Figuring out your personal style and finding friends who appreciate who you are go a long way toward feeling good about yourself. But your accomplishments, especially in school, can also make a difference. From about middle school onward, uh, there's just this huge pressure to always be feminine, always be cute and bouncy and perky, and you know that doesn't go all that well with serious academics. So, I think a lot of girls are hurt by that. Not Melissa. She's focused on science and wants to become a computer programmer. In her school, not many girls are interested in advanced sciences, and that hasn't been easy for Melissa. The initial impression that most guys have is that girls are not good at science and won't make a good lab partner. I can remember just being ridiculed, tortured. The struggle was definitely there, but I guess probably when I was about 14 or 15, I realized, first of all, I couldn't change myself. And I guess I got to the point where I didn't really care enough what people thought about me to even want to try to change. 
I just thought it was more important to be who I was and pursue what interested me than to try to be popular. Melissa says one person who played a key role in helping her overcome that struggle and find her own identity is her dad. She says he's always been there for her. He's always pushed me towards science and I'll, uh, starting back I can remember when I was about six getting a microscope under the Christmas tree. And... Melissa fought the conventional view about girls in science and now when it comes to her future, the sky's the limit. She has advice for other teens. Just not to give up, I mean, to go for the math or science or computers. Um, everything else is just temporary, you know. Uh, your career is a lot more permanent. Doing well in school is important. So is getting praised for your achievements. But praise that isn't earned can be a problem. Christina says in her old school, some of her teachers constantly showered her with compliments, even if she didn't deserve them. Finally, it gets to the point where you really don't appreciate their compliments anymore. You just kind of ignore them. Being praised for your achievements can help boost your self-esteem. But when the praise is overdone or isn't deserved... There's no longer the sense of earning something, of being able to set a goal work for it, accomplishment, accomplishment, and know that there are, there are distinctions between who does a better performance and who does a less than perfect performance. Christina says in her new school, the work is tougher, getting good grades is tougher, but when she receives praise, she knows it's real. It's kind of like having a second set of parents here because they just push you to do better and they praise you whenever you do really well and they're happy when you're happy. And that helped Christina set goals for herself. Not just to do well in school, but to look towards the future as well. I'm moving to New York and I'm going to culinary school. Hopefully after that, I'll see where that takes me. wrecked her brain all night to figure out. Shay's dyslexia made it difficult for her to feel good about herself. So much of a struggle for me each day, you know, trying to work up the self-confidence, just be like, I can do this. And it's not a reflection on you if you're trying your best. You need to always remember that I did my best and I'm going to now tweak or change a little bit is what I mean by tweak what I did to reach my goal, so next time I'm gonna get closer. Shay kept getting closer with the help of a tutor who taught her ways to cope with her dyslexia. She really helped me with the emotional part and telling me like, it made me feel better because I came to her, she told me, she's like, you're not the only one like this, you know, there's other kids. And it all just started clicking like, whoa, you know, there's a reason why. <laughs> and that's what really made me feel better. To feel good about ourselves, we need we need things to feel good about. We need accomplishments. We need mastery experiences. We need real competencies. And, and when we succeed, then that's when we feel good about ourselves. Focus on the positive aspects of your personality, your accomplishments, talents, and contributions to the community. Glenn overcame his shyness by focusing on his strengths and setting goals for himself. How are you? 18, right? Yes, I'm 18, right? Sarah learned. It's okay to be different. We all have different opinions, but that's okay. Accept each other for who you are. And Steven and Justin realized that their height didn't have to affect their self-esteem. It's who you are and how you present yourself to other people. Keep your head up. Keep doing what you do, you know. Um, be yourself, you know. I mean, you have to earn. If they see how you act, you um, get some respect. Having positive self-esteem helped Melissa and Christina figure out what's important to them and where they're headed. I'm probably going to major in computer science and then hopefully I'll land a great job. I have a direction of exactly what I want to do and I know exactly how I'm going to get there. And so that kind of gives me a greater sense of self-esteem because I know that it's all falling into place. What are some ways you can improve your self-esteem? 